In today's video, we are going to discuss how to determine how big of a battery bank you need for your home solar system. And the short answer you're gonna hear from a lot of people is buy as many batteries as you can afford. And while I can sympathize with that answer, that doesn't really give me a lot of information on how well off I'm gonna be depending on how big of a battery bank I can afford. Now, because the batteries are the most expensive part of your whole home solar system, most people just buy what they can afford rather than actually buying what ideally they'd like to have. Now, a simple calculation I like to use is just get one of your electric bills, take a look at it, find out how many kilowatt hours of electricity you use per month on average. Now, it's going to be different month to month, obviously, but just try to take an average and take that average amount of kilowatt hours you use in a given month and divide by 30. That is how many kilowatt hours you use per day from the grid or your electric company to run your house. Now multiply that by two, and that is typically how big of a battery bank you'd like to purchase upfront if you could. Now it's always nice to be able to buy more, but again, that's the most expensive part of the system. Most people have to settle in this area. Now for ease of numbers, let's just say you use the average of what the normal, typical American household uses, which is 30 kilowatt hours per day. So if you multiply that by two, ideally you'd like to have about 60 kilowatt hours of battery storage. Now having 60 kilowatt hours of battery storage, we get you about two to three days of backup. If there was a storm, you didn't have much production coming from your solar panels. And in heavy rain, you're gonna have almost nothing coming from your solar panels. But if it's just standard overcast weather, you can produce about 20 to 30% of what you normally would on a sunny day. So it's not like you're not gonna get any power at all, it's just gonna be less. Now, as I just mentioned, in that scenario, 60 kilowatt hours would buy you about two to three days of backup. But you can extend that further if you actually tried or if you worked at it. You could shut off your big energy consumption loads like, like your air conditioner or your heater. Hopefully you have a wood fireplace, you could burn wood instead to stay warm. If you cook on an electric stove, not cooking on electric, maybe just use a microwave instead. So there's ways you can extend that. And you can, you'd can you be surprised how long you can run your TV, your internet, and all of your lights and still use the microwave or coffee pot occasionally. You can go a long time on 30 kilowatts of battery storage if you're just running those items. So being able to conserve, you can really extend that grid outage for a longer time if you needed to. So let's say you go with 60 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So how much is that gonna cost would probably be your next question. At today's prices, 60 kilowatt hours of batteries, the ones that I like, lithium iron phosphate, are gonna run you about $17,000. Now, I know initially that sounds like a lot. It's really not that bad. Uh, when I bought my system about almost three years ago, it cost me, it would have cost me $24,000 for that same battery bank. So prices have been coming down and they've came down dramatically over the last 10 to 15 years. Now for me, I couldn't afford $24,000 up front, so I just got 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage. And to this day, that's all I'm using on my house, though I am gonna add to it here shortly. And in fact, I use on average about 50 kilowatt hours a day on my system because I have a 240 volt deep water well pump that actually pumps water into storage tanks that we use because I'm in a rural area. And there's also a 240 volt pressure pump. So I use a lot more electricity than the average person. And I only got 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So technically that wasn't even a day's worth of backup for me. And even just having that 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage, I'm still able to remain off grid or not use any power from the grid about 85% of the time. Now, the way my solar system works on my whole house is I have the inverter, the solar inverter set to where once the batteries get drained down to 20%, then I go back to grid and just have the grid subsidize whatever loads I'm using in my house until the sun comes back up the next day to go ahead and run my house and charge the system. Now I do have a generator for backup as well, just in case the grid goes down and my batteries get drained, then I'll fire up that generator and have it just charge the batteries, run my house for a while, and then just go back to batteries. Now, if you're interested in seeing a PDF, like a wiring schematic of how I did my solar system, including every piece of equipment I used for the install, with links on where to buy them, you can download that by going to solarpdfdownload.com and it's free. So just go ahead and visit that website and you can download it there. Now in that PDF, I actually, and in my house right now, I use as the solar inverter, which is the heart of the system. That's the part that actually takes the solar power. It takes your batteries and it converts all of that into AC power to send to your home panel. So I went with the Solark 15K because about three years ago, that was the best option for a whole home backup. 
Today, there's a lot more options and I actually recommend the inverter you see behind me here, the FlexBoss 21 from EG4. You're gonna save a lot of money and actually have more power by going with that. But the PDF I showed you, everything else is gonna be very similar. So it should still help out a lot. And in fact, I have another PDF of this system behind me on how to install it. And I'll leave a link in the description as well if you want to download that one. Now, as I mentioned, even having only 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage, I can still remain off grid 85% of the time. So how do I do that? Well, I manage my electricity very carefully. Once you have one of these solar inverters back here, you can see how much power you're using at any moment in time, and you can adjust your large loads, like I would just turn off maybe my electric heater if my batteries were starting to get low, and, I'd, and I would light up my wood-burning fireplace, for instance. Or I try to cook, if we're gonna cook on an electric stove, you try to do that before the sun goes down. Or like me, I have a water heater that I can actually adjust the temperature from my phone, it's a heat pump water heater. I can actually, when the sun is out, heat that water to 140 degrees and then back that off to around 110, 115 degrees at night where we still have hot water, but it's just not using as much energy at night. So there's things you can do to basically try to pull, try to use as much energy as you can during the day when you have solar and sun out rather than using it at night. And a big way you can save energy is not using that electric dryer at night. If you can try to do that during the day when you have sun, that will help tremendously or you can even get a heat pump washer dryer combo like I have. Go on my channel, you'll see a video on energy efficient appliances. You can check that out and see all the appliances that I use. And also in that PDF you can download, it's solarpdfdownload.com. I actually have energy saving tips on how I do it that you'll probably find helpful as well. Now what I'm about to say next typically doesn't apply to many people because of budget constraints. It's still worth mentioning anyways. There is such thing as having a battery bank that is too large for the amount of panels you have. You want to make sure those batteries you have are getting charged at least every, if there's two days straight of full sun, you want them to get a full charge by that point. Now that's just my opinion. Other people might have different opinions on that. I like to make sure those cells and those batteries are being balanced all of the time, which means they need to get a full charge. So you don't want to go weeks without having your batteries be charged in my opinion. So me personally, I have a pretty large solar array. I have 60 solar panels ground mounted, it adds up to about 19,200 watts. And I've actually never seen how much power my panels can actually produce because by noon, my batteries are fully charged and it's running my house. But on days where it's been really cold and I've gotten the most out of it as possible, I've seen about 110 kilowatt hours of energy produced in one day from my 19,200 watts of solar panel. So I can easily triple my battery bank size and go from 30 kilowatt hours to 90 kilowatt hours and be able to charge that whole battery bank on one sunny day. So I've got a lot of room for expansion. Again, there's just budget constraints there. Now let's say you're not in a position to be able to buy that full two days of battery backup storage, which in our example would have been 60 kilowatt hours. If you can't afford that upfront, don't sweat it. Go ahead and buy what you can afford for now. You can always add batteries later as long as you can still get the same make, model, I'd rather have them match up exactly. And if you're buying lithium iron phosphate, I'm not worried about battery degradation in the first one or two years of those batteries. So I would just go ahead and add batteries at that point. In fact, I'm about to add batteries and my system's been installed for almost three years. I'd love to hear some of your opinions if you think it's totally wrong to try to add batteries after the fact, like I just mentioned. Love to see your opinion on it. If you disagree, let me know why, but I'm about to do it and I'll make a video on it to see how it's performing as well. So in regards to buying only what you can afford when it comes to batteries, look at it this way. It's better in a grid down situation to at least have some battery backup. And in fact, even if you only had 14 kilowatt hours of battery storage, which is this battery you see right here behind me, the EG4 indoor wall mount, 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. Even if you only had that, you can extend that for a long period of time. If you're just running your TV, your fridges, internet, maybe run a coffee pot, microwave, even some heating blankets to help stay warm because heating blankets are a great option that you can just plug into the wall. Those use like 80 watt hours. So you can make those last a long time on these batteries. So at least in a grid down situation, you still have access to most of your normal house. You just might have to back off for sure on the heating or the air conditioning, unless you have a real efficient mini split in one bedroom like I do, which really helps out to just keep your energy usage low and use very little of your battery storage overnight. And this battery right here is about $3,300 right now. And I'll link to this battery in the description of this video, but it's an awesome option if you're doing it indoor. And they also have an outdoor rated battery that's very similar to this one in size. And it's even EMP protected. 
I'll link to that one as well in the description of this video. So if you are interested in a solar system like mine, I highly recommend you download that PDF at solarpdfdownload.com. That should give you a really good start on how I did it, what equipment I used for the installation, down to all of the parts I used, the conduit, wire size, all of that. Well, that's it for now. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on what you think of this video, in my opinions. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing over here. I'd appreciate that. See you in the next video.